Uh, Kumaran, you can begin after you can hear me. I'm sorry. You can begin if you uh, want to get started. I'm sorry, Jim. What was that? Uh, can you start? You can start now if you want. I'm hearing some background noise. Um, I'm sorry, Jim. What was that? Uh, can you start? You. Jim. Thanks, everyone, for joining today. Um, today, we are going to. Um, I think we are better now. Uh, let's go ahead and start. Uh, today, uh, we are going to cover uh, best practice for SPR connection pooling and configuration tuning. Uh, my name is Kumaran Ayakoti Nathan. Um, I've been with the uh, SPR application support team now. for last 18 years. Um, I have uh, Jim with me today. Uh, Jim. Uh, my name is Kumaran Ayakoti Nathan. Uh, Hello, I'm James Stevens. I've been uh, working with Sphere and Liberty for several years, and I'm an expert in uh, connection management, data sources, uh, connection factories, JDBC, um, in, in several of those areas, and uh, definitely, uh, especially in connection pooling and connection pooling behavior. So pass it back to come around. In several of those areas, and uh, definitely, uh, and connection pooling behavior, and uh, definitely. Thanks, Jim. I think there's a small delay. Let's uh, move on to the next slide. Thanks. Uh, yeah. and, uh, so today we are going to cover a I few important things. So we are going to go over uh, what is the uh, connection pooling, and uh, so we are also we are going to cover. Give me one minute. We are going to go over what is the connection pooling. And uh, we are also going to cover. Uh, there are little uh, technical issues. Give me one second, OK? I'm sorry. Apologies for the. Okay, I think uh, it should be better now. Um, is it okay. can, can can you, hear, is, hear me better now? Can you hear me better now too? I can hear you better now, and I don't. Okay. I don't think I hear the echo. That was really annoying. <laughs> I know it was annoying actually. Okay, let me just share my. Okay, uh, Jim, can you see me? See my screen, Jim. Uh, yes, I can. It looks good. Okay, I really sincerely apologize for uh, the background noise. I think there was another session was running on and which uh, uh, did the conflict. Um, so let's just move on to the slide. So today we are going to cover uh, the connection pooling overview, and uh, we are also going to cover the J2C connection pooling. Uh, some of the components in the J2C connection pooling, like uh, pool manager. Uh, free pool, shared pool, unshared pool. And uh, we'll be also discussing about uh, the transaction in Vespira application server. 
and uh, we will be also doing the recommended connection pool settings uh, which is kind of a very important um, because j2c i always believe it's kind of a backbone of uh, vespir application server or for any application servers because it does a lot of magic for you uh, in, in in for your better performance and um, for your stability and uh, optimization throughput everything is kind of a key uh, for the jtc connection pooling so we'll be discussing more about that and that followed by a demo uh, jim will be sharing the demo um, like uh, how you can optimize the connection pooling using pmi metrics let's move on to the next slide Connection pooling. Um, it's connection pooling is a very expensive uh, operations to always to connect with your database and uh, uh, create uh, your socket and uh, getting back and forth this kind of expensive operation. To avoid this, Vespere application server pools all this connection and maintained uh, maintain those connection in a free pool. We'll be discussing that in the uh, future slides. Mm -hmm. So the connections are returned to the pool when closed by the application and the connections will be reused again so this connection pooling implementation is based on jca we also call it as j2c you will hear j2c jca interchangeably so the support connections to any background if a resource adapter is provided um, like we we often get a question what kind of database you support and what are the drivers you support right to answer the question, we support pretty much any database and any driver as long as they follow JCA spec. If they strictly follow the JCA spec, we should be able to accommodate those drivers and database in Vespere application servers. More information are documented in the, line, in the link. You can review those later. Let's move on to the next slide. So connection pool properties and basics, uh, we will talk about the uh, pool manager and what is a free pool, shared pool, and unshared pool. Pool manager. So it is a JDC object which implements the connection pool. And uh, there will be one pool manager per data source. If you have 10 data source defined in your uh, configuration, there will be 10 pool manager will be created when it is in use. And it contains free pool, shared pool, and unshared pool. So what is a free pool? The free pool is the connection pool which holds all the free connection within the Vespire application server. When you make a connection to the database, the connection will be in, when it is in use, it will be in either shared pool or in unshared pool. Once the connection ends and once the transaction completes, those connections will be back to the free pool and sitting in the free pool for new requests to come and reuse those connection. Let's move on to next slide. So shareable and unshareable connection. If you use the shareable connection in a right way, then you can get a lot of benefits out of it. But if you are not following the serial reuse pattern, which we call it as get use close pattern, if you are not following it strictly in your web application server, in your application, then shareable connection may not give you more benefit. So what is shareable connection? Shareable connection, the connection can be shared within that application, within the transaction scope. For example, if there are two get connection, you are making call uh, to the backend, right? Within application, you are calling get connection and you are uh, getting a connection from the database. And uh, again, you are calling get connection from the database, right? For the two get connection request, one physical connection will try to give handle two handle back to the application handle one handle two instead of you creating a two physical connection for two get connection request you are actually getting only one physical connection and two handle the the connection physical connections are shared here within that uh, shareable scope but again if you are not using the serial reuse pattern get use close pattern this may not happen properly so make sure in your application, you always get the connection, use the connection, close the connection, then call the get connection. So the connections are 100% shared within the transaction. Unshareable connection, it's very straightforward. It's one is to one mapping. For each and every request, 
there will be one physical connection back to the application, but when it is closed and the data is committed, the connection will go back to the free pool. Let me move on to the next slide. So we'll discuss a little bit about the transaction management. So how the transaction management work within the Vesperia application server, because transaction management and the J2C is kind of a tightly coupled to each other. So this application server uses a transaction manager that takes responsibility of managing transaction across multiple resources, resource managers. So there are two types of transaction in the application server. One is the global transaction, one is the local transaction. Global transaction. So we also call the global transaction as two-phase transaction or exit transaction. There will be actually two phase will be happening during the global transaction. So one is prepared, another is commit. So as I said earlier, the transaction manager will be working with multiple resource managers. The resource manager can be your backend, multiple backends. For example, you are doing a select from a DB2 database and doing the insert in your Oracle database, right? You are doing multiple transactions on the backend, multiple resource managers are engaged in this transaction. So in the first phase, in the prepare, so the retrieve what you did from the DB2 and the insert what you did in your Oracle database, both resource manager will come back and tell the transaction manager saying, okay, I did my part, I'm good to go. Now you can commit or roll back, right? When both the transaction manager says they are good to go, then we commit the transaction. That's a phase two. If one of them says, oh, I did not complete for whatever reason, then we will roll back. So there will be two phase will be happening during this global transaction and it will be working with multiple resource manager in the back end. Let's move on to LTC, uh, local transaction containment. So LTC, so J2C spec says any code that running within the web container or within the EJB container cannot run it on its own because there should be a boundary, there should be a transaction boundary for each and every um, um, the, the, the application which is running on the containers. If you are doing, if you are running your uh, bean managed, uh, uh, sorry, container managed EJBs, so the transaction, global transaction will be created automatically. Or if you are starting your global transaction with user transaction API, so there also the global transaction will be automatically get created. But if you don't do any one of those, suppose if you are running a servlet, when it enters into an init method, servlet init, we start a new transaction boundary, which is nothing but the LTC. It's the same for your uh, being managed EJBs also, or the MDBs, if there is no transaction created by the container or by the user with user transaction API, we create a transaction boundary that's called LTC, local transaction containment. And uh, the LTC does not end for suppose in case of servlet until the do service method ends. Let's move on to the next slide. So this slide shows when the connection goes back to free pool. This may be a very simple thing to see. Why do even I care about when the connection go back to free pool, right? As an application developer, you may not know when this all happens, but this is very critical for you to understand how many connections are getting used by your application. Mm -hmm. Suppose if I'm 20 connection, maybe mm -hmm. 200 red was still waiting for those connection um, to, to get back to your database. So this is kind of a very, it's, it's kind of important to understand when this connection goes back to free pool. On the left-hand side, you see in case of LTC, local transaction containment, I kind of tried to split into unshared and shared pool. So unshared pool within the LTC, when the connections are closed, you make a connection close. And when the data is committed, uh, you say transaction but commit, and the data is committed, then it goes back to free pool. It won't wait for the container to complete. It doesn't, it, it won't be waiting for your transaction to complete. So in unshared LTC, mm -hmm. when the connection is closed and data committed, it will go back to free pool. In case of shared, until the transaction ends, the connection will not go back to free pool. 
this is why you need to be very careful in writing your application. Suppose if you have server one, server two, server three, and you're calling from server one to server two, server two to server three, until all the request comes back and the transaction end, the connection is never going to go back to free pool. It will be in the shared pool mm -hmm. and any new request comes in for other applications or another request. So it is going to get a new, uh, uh, new connection back from the database. So in case of global transaction, the same unshared, shared, it doesn't matter until the transaction end, it will never go back to the free pool. So in global transaction, it's a transaction is the boundary. So when the transaction end, it will go back to the free pool, but always make sure you close those connections. So let's move on to the next slide. So best practice and recommendations. And we'll be talking about some of the best practice that would help your application and the performance. So this chart shows how you can better utilize or your Vespere application server connection pooling. This is strictly for just for a Vespere application server. If you have uh, um, some stack product like uh, uh, BAW or uh, Portal or uh, some other uh, stack product running, you may have to follow their recommendation. This is just if you're running Vespere application server, uh, you can follow this. For example, if there are a thousand requests comes in at any given time, right? Uh, to your network or your load balancer at any given time, thousand requests comes in. Then on the plugin, you can reduce that to 750. And uh, for your web container, EJV container threads, you can have like about like a uh, 400 or 500. And uh, for your data source, you can create your connection pool as like a, a 250 or 200 connection. So it's kind of a funnel approach. Start from big and uh, go all the way down. Uh, this is no hard and fast rule. Uh, you can change it according to your configuration, but this is kind of a general uh, recommendation. This is I'm talking about at any particular given time, right? Uh, so there may not be that many requests at particular given minute or second. So you, it's just an example. Let's move on to the next slide. Uh, this is one of the very important and uh, key uh, connection pool properties uh, that you should be aware of. So when you create a data source, this is the very first panel you see, um, the connection pool properties. There are different connection pool advanced properties, which we are not going to cover today. But this property is kind of a major and very important property that you should all understand and you should know how to configure it because most of the issues and uh, tickets that we receive are related to this. If it is not configured properly, there is a high chance that you may end up hitting some issue. The first one is the connection timeout. These are the default value, what you see in the left-hand side, right? Uh, these are the default values. So the connection timeout is 180 seconds by default. We recommend you to set to 60 seconds because for example, if you set uh, the max connection to 10, right? And there are like a 20 connection waiting for a connection all 20 other connection should wait for 180 seconds to receive a connection wait timeout exception. If you don't want your request to wait for that long, you can reduce the connection timeout to 60 is the recommended value. If you want to see the timeout even earlier than that, probably you can set it to 40 or 30 as well. Maximum connection, 10 is, is a default again, but it depends on your application. We cannot recommend, we cannot say use 20 or use 100 or use 1000, right? And uh, you should know what is required for your application and how many requests are coming in and how your applications are behaving. And uh, Jim has a very good uh, demo. He'll be showing running with multiple application requests and how you can increase or you can decrease by following the PMA metrics. And the minimum connection in the, in the previous release, it was one. Um, we kind of changed starting V8559 and version nine. The, the default value is zero. We recommend zero unless you have a reason to have a minimum connection within the connection pool, right? Suppose you your system is very kind of a busy system and it's 24 by seven access by the customers and it's not going to be idle for any given time then I would recommend setting it to 10 or 20 based on that circumstance, right? In most of the scenarios that I have seen so far, customers use it 
in the morning and after midnight there will be very less activity or no activity by the time they come back in the morning the connection still in the uh, free pool and you try to access the connection and you may end up getting a stale connection because that connection might have been chopped by your firewall or by a database or from some external uh, the external things right so that is the reason we recommend it to be zero i said like if you are using 24 by 7 the system is accessed your application is getting accessed you can consider that to um, set to 10 or 5. Reap time, this is a thread which sleeps, runs every three minutes to see when to clean up the connection from the free port, right? So you can leave it with 180 unless you want to clean up the connection faster than it's needed. Unused time, this is when it kicks off and says when my connection can be cleaned from the free pool, how long I can keep the connection in the free pool, right? So unused timeout, like by default is 1800. Um, if you want to live with 1800, that's absolutely fine. It's kind of a 30 minutes plus three minutes, 33 minutes. It won't do anything to the connection in the free pool. Suppose if the connections are sitting in the free pool for 30 minutes or 33 minutes, then those connections will be wiped out from the, the free port by the unused timeout. If you don't want all the connections to be removed, if you have a minimum connection set to 10, for example, those test connections are going to stay there forever. The unused timeout connection will not be removing those free connections. So if you set the minimum connection to 10 again, those 10 minimum connection will stay in the free pool all the time. Unused kind of timeout will not be removing those connections within that minimum connections um, that, that's been set. Rest of the connection it will remove. If it is a minimum to zero, all the connection from the free pool will be removed after the 30 or 33 minutes. But if it is involved in a transaction, it won't remove those connections. And uh, always make sure you set this timeout value less than the uh, a firewall timeout value. So we don't want to have the connection lost or chopped by firewall or someone else external. Let's move on to the next slide. Um, so PMI. Um, so we are not going to cover or talk about the PMI. I just have a slide to just to say what is PMI. It, it's a it's a monitoring service which is running within the SP application server. It helps monitor the overall uh, health of uh, application server. And um, um, Jim will be using this uh, PMI to uh, enable some of the counters, and uh, he will be showing you demo on how you can uh, increase or decrease your connection pool based on the load of your application. With that, um, the demo, I will pass it on to Jim. Uh, Jim, probably you can um, take control of the screen and uh, you can share your demo. And again, I apologize for whatever happened in the beginning. I think it, it, there was some um, technical issue in the background. Thanks, Jim. Uh, probably you can take the control. Okay. Doesn't seem to be uh, taking control. Okay. So while Jim taking control of this, right? Um, yeah, I will try to uh, answer the question that's been posted in the uh, in the YouTube or or in the stream yard. So I will try to answer those question. In the meantime, if you guys have any question, feel free to uh, post your questions in the in the uh, live stream or in the wherever you are watching, right? So we will make sure all the questions are addressed. We will try to compile all the questions and we will try to answer at the end of the session. Uh, if not, we will try to answer those questions in the in the forum after uh, this video has been published. And in the meantime, Jim, probably I can uh, take a control as you are uh, working on your screen sharing. 
probably I can share and I, I can share one more slide, uh, which is also important to share. Probably I will just share and I'll come back until you figure out your uh, the uh, sharing. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Um, let me just go over some of the coding best practice. Um, uh, Jim probably will be covering this also a little later. So as you could see in this coding best practice, you always get the connection, use the connection here, and then you close the connection. Here we are closing it in the finally. So anyway, it will get executed and uh, make sure you close the connection. Get, use, close the connection. And I have uh, another important best practice uh, slide over here. Um, always upgrade to the latest Web Speed Application Server fix pack. I've seen many customers run Web Speed Application Server with very old fix pack. In each and every fix pack, we kind of fix about um, in hundreds, not in uh, numbers, right? Not in tens or twenties and hundreds. We, we will be fixing that many issues in each and every fix pack. So it always advisable being on the latest fix pack level. And uh, is my screen sharing now? Maybe Elena, um, can you see Jim's screen sharing? Because I'm sharing my screen. I can stop sharing in a minute. Yeah, in the meantime, Jim, let me just finish it real quick and probably okay. I'll come back and uh, yeah, you can just work on it. You can just ask Elena to maybe sure if you can see in the stream yet. And the second bullet is do not place multiple versions of JDBC. We see it's very quite often. People just keep their same OJDBC 6, OJDBC 8, OJDBC 7 in the in the jars in the same class path. We do not guarantee the order of which the jar files are loaded. Whichever gets loaded first in that particular class loader, that's what is going to be used by your application. So there is no guarantee. So do not keep multiple versions of the JDBC driver in the same class path. Always make sure you use the latest driver. So this is another thing we, we keep seeing issues. Drivers are old, they migrate the application, they migrate everything, but they they forget to migrate the driver. So always try to be on the latest driver. Always follow get use close pattern. So make sure you always follow that, right? And make sure you close the statement and results that object in application after that's being used. For secure database, Try to use J2C auth alias in Web Speed Application Server to connect to your secure database. If possible, try to handle the state connection and resource, resource exception that's coming back from the database. In Web Speed Application Server, any application that's written by the uh, database, uh, most of the exceptions, we try to wrap those exceptions to something called shell connection exception. And we will give the stale connection exception back to the application so that the application can handle it easily. They can just handle stale connection. Okay, if I receive stale connection exception, try to reconnect the request, right? So you can do that. And if 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 there are too many connections recently with this pandemic and with uh, so many uh, things that we have seen, uh, like uh, unemployment benefits, a lot of people like uh, uh, climbing at the same time. We have seen many applications like that, the search to their database. At, at, they open it at 9 o'clock, and all the requests goes in at the very given time. And then that crashed the database. We've seen this time after time in recently. If you see any search issues, there is a property called search production. You can say, OK, mine is 100 connection. I will allow only 50 at, at this time. Then after 30 seconds, then I will allow another 20 and 12, like that. So you can set the property. This is the link I have given a search in our knowledge center or search production. That's one of the very good property which you can utilize for those scenarios. And you can also tune your connection pool in the, um, as given in this following link, you can follow. And there are some few more guidance on how your connection pool can be tuned. With that, let me stop the sharing. Jim, is your sharing working now? Let's just make sure for the demo. I know I'm the on the screen that I want to share, but it doesn't seem to want to transfer control to me. 
Yeah, I can see your screen. Which one can you see? Oh, I just saw your screen now. I think it moved back again. Is it still there now? Uh, it's not now, actually. I don't see it. OK, so maybe if I switch to this other screen. Yeah, go to the blue screen, and it will add to the stream. Go to your blue screen. So I was just going to move to, do you see anything right now? Um, I'm not in this screen. Um, How about now? Yeah, go to the demo. Yeah, now I can see it, Jim. Still can see the, the demo? Uh, yeah, I can, yeah, I can see the demo now. OK, let me uh, move over there. It looks like it's tied to that screen on my Mac instead of the one I thought it was on. So I'll just move a few things over there, and we should be ready to go here. OK. OK, one more window to move. OK. So you, does it look good? I have four screens or, that I'm sharing. It looks good to me. OK, Over. sounds good. I'll get going here. All right. Um, so for this demo, uh, there are actually two common problems that uh, many of our customers run into uh, where, with in-use time and in wait time. And it has a lot to do with the, the load on the connection pool and how long connections are actually in use, you know, uh, long running queries. And so both can impact how you need to change your configuration to better handle the load. Uh, of course, depending on how much your database, your backend database actually can handle. So for this uh, example, uh, I have an app. It's just a very simple app. All it does is it gets connections, uses connections, and uh, closes the connection. Um, and I simulate a query by just doing a delay uh, from the get and the close. And then in my resources, my initial data source is actually going to be configured on the low side for max connections. So I'm just going out to the connection pool for my data source. And my initial value is going to be two max connections. So normally what you'd expect in this case is if you ran with 10 to 20 clients running against a pool of uh, two connections, it's probably going to be slow. You're going to have a lot of wait time. and uh, your end use times are going to be increased too, at the same time, uh, just because things are not performing as well as they should be. So one way to see this behavior and to monitor it is to actually go down and turn some performance monitoring on. Um, and so you can go down to performance monitoring and tooling, tuning, sorry and then uh, click Current Activity. I already started the monitoring for this server in advance, so I just need to click on Server. And then I'm going to go down, and I'm going to narrow it down to just to monitor our data source that we're using here. And then I'm going to go ahead and start it. So. You may or may not have some initial values here. Um, what I'll normally do at this point is just go ahead and reset to zero. And so that resets the values back. So at this point, um, we've opened up PMI, and we have our app and our data source configured uh, to the way we want to run. And, and we're going to actually kick off our first uh, run of uh, some of these apps. So it's going to be running 10 clients, and it's going to be in a loop uh, for X amount of time. And they're all going to kick off and start running. 
And you can see it's stepping through all of the connections. And when it's done, um, we're going to run it a couple times. So when the PMI data is being collected, it's over a certain interval time and it's gathering all of this information. And your best, uh, the, the longer you can run, the you get the best values. Um, and you'll start getting consistent values uh, over time. So I'm just gonna run this a couple more times. Um, so I just uh, unmarked the ones I don't want to track and in the graph up above, and I marked the two that I want to see on the graph. And so of the two values, uh, use time and wait time are the two that I'm most interested in for figuring out if, if we have an overloaded pool. And if you have wait times that are extremely high, it's very likely that your connection pool is being overloaded. Um, you're hoping that is actually at a much lower value and or really at zero. As a backup to uh, PMI, there is always, you know, M-beans that you could use too that will actually show you values of how the pool is behaving uh, interactively as you move along. So this is a, the second way of actually monitoring uh, the pool to see if it's actually performing, you know, like you want it. So when you run a application and you're actually looking at the MBean show pool contents, for instance, you can actually see information that is actually shows up in our trace and is very helpful. Um, and you do see that there's a waiter count of five, you know, clients that are out there that were waiting for a connection and the connections are unshared in this case. Um, so this is a good way of, of viewing it in addition, but the primary way still is over here and monitoring your PMI and uh, and following these times down here that are related to your delay. If we run a app that's even worse than the one I'm running, which is fun, what ends up happening is this will go up and get even worse than what it is now, of course. So I'm just gonna run it once, we should see this spike up. And so what we really wanna do in this situation is evaluate what our, our, uh, our, our connection pool is actually set at. And so what I'm gonna do is go out to the connection pool settings and I'm gonna go ahead and change this max connection pool of two to 20. Make sure we have plenty. Save it. Then uh, most values that you change in WebSphere are not dynamic, so you need to recycle your server. I'm gonna go ahead and stop the server and start it. And as soon as we're back up and running, um, which should only take a few more seconds here, we'll uh, get back into the PMI monitoring. And this time we're gonna go ahead and 
kick off the same same run and see what happens. Okay, let's go ahead and start running. So in this view, you can actually see that we're running with more connections automatically and uh, it's kind of quick to see that there's no waiters at this point. And the PMI is going to start, you know, over its interval, it's going to kick in here and start giving us data. So this time, what we see is because we've increased max connections, we have no wait time. And so all of the clients that are running, as soon as they request a connection, they get a connection and they start using it. So now it's just these in-use times that, that we're running with. And uh, I'm going to run one more time just to kind of get a steady state. And... Uh, this demo is running in a very short window of time. And normally you'll have this uh, performance viewer running over a longer period of time with your application to make sure that you're kind of getting into a steady state. You're seeing the behavior that is consistent and then you make your adjustments. And uh, and so at this point, we can definitely see that this application is running kind of poorly. And if I actually run the one that runs a little bit faster, what you're actually hoping is that you'll actually see a, a decrease of in-use time too, depending on what the app was doing. So let me go ahead and, oops, I think I zapped that up there, so. I'll just go here and I'll run faster running one. We'll run it three times and then we'll hopefully see the in use time drop. Okay, it's starting to drop. All of these values collected are averages. Uh, some of them are different than averages, um, but this one is an average. So it, again, over a longer period of time, this will keep being averaged and some of the values will drop off that were higher and some of them are gonna be less. And then 
if you know your app is definitely performing better, um, if you're starting a new run, kind of like what we were doing, then uh, we can definitely uh, go from there. But that pretty much completes the demo on, on this side. And we're running out of time, so I think we're going to open it up to um, the question and answers. And let me see if I can see the screen that we're on. OK. Thanks, so I'll yeah. have you take it back because I don't see the screens that we're on. Yeah, that, that, that's fine. I, 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 I was just watching there. I think there are a couple of questions. Probably I can repeat the question here. And okay. I will try to answer the question. And uh, feel free to jump in and uh, add to it, OK? Um, so let me read the very first question uh, that's received uh, from one of our um, customer. And um, the question from Sheshatri, um, is there a possibility of global transaction getting time out if we use funnel approach in case of high request? To answer to the question, no. Um, global transaction should not get time out because of using the uh, funnel approach. So the by default, the transaction will time out after 120 seconds. If you are running a transaction for longer than 120 seconds, you should consider increasing the timeout value. Unless otherwise the timeout is reached, your transaction will not get timed out just because of uh, using the um, uh, funnel approach. Um, Jim, do you want to add anything to that or? Uh, no, that's that sounds good. OK. So the next question is, whenever an API request came to a web server, based on the connection pool size, once request is processed, then commit and, and need to close the connection. Is that right? So the question is, do we need to close the connection after it's all getting processed, after we do the commit? Yes. You must close the connection after you use it and commit the connection, commit the transaction, and you must close the connection. That's the best practice that you should be always doing. If you don't do it, the connection will be all piling it up. It will be sitting in either shared or unshared pool, and uh, it will never go back to free pool. Any new request comes in, it's going to try to take a new connection from the free pool, and you will max out with the connection. After the timeout, your all the connection requests will be piled up, will be waiting to get a connection, and you will start getting connection timeout exception. And also, you get yet to see a 0045E connection uh, timeout exception. So, and you will see the hung threads, and your system will not be performing as you expect. So, and that I could add to just a little bit is that there are some exceptions to that rule where if there are some misbe misbehaving applications that have not closed the connection, uh, the containers are smart enough to close the connections for you in some cases. But as Kumaran already said, the container closing it actually is a longer duration of time than you closing it. So it's always better that the application closes it as soon as it's done instead of waiting for the container to do it in those ex you know, exception cases when the container can do it. And so best practice, just like Kumar said, can't use close. Thanks, Jim. And uh, these are the questions I see in the in the chat. Um, let's see if any other question from anywhere. And I don't see any other question. Probably I can go on to the summary and to wrap up this session. So again, thanks everyone for joining today. And I we sincerely apologize for the in the beginning that we had some technical issues and uh, good we were able to sort it out and uh, fix it and uh, today we, we we kind of uh, discussed about um, connection pool settings and why we should use connection pooling right uh, why you should be using um, uh, connection pool best practices and we also talked about uh, the important pieces within the um, j2c connection pooling like um, what is the pool manager it consists of your free pool, shared pool, 
um, and unshared uh, connections. Three pool just holds all the connection which is not in use by the transaction or any application. The connection has been created. Now it's held in the Vesper application server within a pool, which is called free pool. And we have something called shared pool and unshared pool. Both will be in use when the application is uh, doing the transaction or requesting or doing a, whatever it is doing. But um, in case of shared transaction, if you follow the right best practices, get use close, the serial reuse, then each and one physical connection will be shared by the multiple request by uh, in, uh, by handles, right? So the physical connection will give you handle one, handle two, handle three, based on number of get connection requests you make, as long as you follow the get use close pattern. And in case of unshared connection, one request, one physical connection. And when the connection is being closed and data is committed, that will go back to free code. That's why in most of the cases, if you have ever worked with support, like uh, when we see an issue that you are not following that, we always recommend switching from shared to unshared to avoid this issue. And uh, the connection would go back to the free pool uh, quite frequently um, than your shared uh, connections. And we also talked about the transaction management and we talked about global transaction LTC. LTC is something in VSPR application server we defines. All the code in the container should be running within that boundary. So we create a transaction boundary, which is nothing but your uh, LTC. And uh, we also talked about uh, the best practices, what you should be doing. Um, always make sure you set the right maximum connection value. We don't want to overdo it, right? Because maximum connection, if you have your application running on cluster, like four application servers in a cluster, each and every connection pool that you have, it kind of gets replicated into all of the four cluster members. Um, so if you set your maximum connection to 10 and you actually have 40 because of four, four application servers, right? Each and every application server will have its own connection and thread pools. So you are actually using 40 connections there. So make sure you are doing that. Um, uh, following the best practices there, like a maximum connection, what it should be set and what it should be your unused timeout and what should be your... Uh, and I think I did not talk about the age timeout at that time. Age timeout can be zero. Um, that's kind of a recommended. Unless you want all the connections to be removed uh, from the connection free pool, right? For example, that, that will be really useful when you are using minimum connection. If you're not using minimum connection, age timeout, unused timeout is not going to make much difference for you. But if you are using the minimum connection, for example, if you want to keep your minimum connection to 10 all the time, but you can you want to remove it after two hours, three hours, whatever, right? That at that time your age timeout will be handy. So you can set that timeout value there. So the age timeout, when the time the connection is created, it will be marked. Okay, the connection created at 11 Eastern today, right? And if you set the age timeout to two hours, so the connection will be removed after two hours after that's been created. So 11 o'clock it created, by one o'clock that connection will be removed. It won't consider what you have in your minimum connections or anything, so it just removes it. But if you're not using minimum connection and you really want the connection to be kept in the minimum connection, in case if you're using, then do not set age timeout, just you can leave it with zero. And also, Jim showed a very good demo on uh, how you can enable PMM metrics and how you can how you can utilize the PMM metrics to adjust your uh, the recommended value. So with that, um, um, uh, Jim, do you want to add anything to the summary? Uh, no, that sounded very good. <laughs> okay, thanks, Jim, and uh, thanks everyone for joining today's live session again. And uh, we look forward to meet you uh, in our next session with a new set of presentation. And uh, probably this is kind of a, we wanted to start basics low and to the intermediate people. Maybe next session, maybe yeah, like a little more advanced. And if you have any more questions, feel free to ask the questions in the channels. And um, we will answer each and every question that we receive in this channel. Like we'll post it in the blog or we'll try to answer it in the channel itself. Thanks again for everyone joining today's session and uh, have a great evening or a great afternoon. Thanks all. Thanks. Mm -hmm.